What is happening in here, in, 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 with the millions? <laughs> and millions of J-Rock's fans from all over the world, you're right here with J-Rock, right here in the Smackdown Hotel on the corner of New Year Road Boulevard and Jabroni Drive. Oh, and we got another Inside the Game for The Last of Us 2. This will be coming out two weeks from Friday. Oh, and J-Rock cannot wait. Get his hand on this, on the People's PlayStation, to lay the smack down on some candy ass. Oh, you better believe it. Um, I might record it and post it on the page. Um, y'all let me know if you want me to do that or not. Y'all don't, you don't say nothing, I ain't gonna waste my time. You want me to record it, post it on here, let me know and I'll do that, all right? But, meanwhile, until then, let's check this thing out. The world of The Last of Us is dangerous. Unless you're living in a protected area, there is something lethal around every corner. Once you venture out of your home, you're in danger. And where we're taking the story and where we're taking Ellie is, like, each step of the way, she's putting herself in more and more danger to Damn. bring these people to justice. Like that actual gameplay, that's what's making that's I would what's so say that the world in every sense of the word is bigger than the last of us part one. Both in scale and the amount of physical space that exists for you to explore if you encounter other people. Yeah, this route has its perks. Our hope is to make every corner a challenge, make every decision hard for Ellie. And so we do that not just in the gameplay experience, but also in the level design. So part of that is making certain experiences really hostile, be it through weather or through rivers or, or craggy cliffs or slick snow. But we also use it in terms of how blind the player is. Like, what can they see? How safe do you feel? Can you see a threat coming around the corner? You never know if the bullets in your gun are going to be enough. You never know if you can stop and bandage your arm. You can never fully breathe. And we want you to be in alignment with Ellie, who can never fully Ooh. breathe when she experiences this trauma. For Jackson specifically, in this we wanted to make it feel like a very close-knit kind of community that's focused on family, focused on sustainable ways of living. I obviously have the hydroelectric dam generator that's powering the town, so we have you know, electricity in Jackson, which is not something that maybe players would expect to see in the world. But given that we're further in time, we wanted to show that there are certain people dedicated in the world to rebuilding a life that doesn't revolve around killing people and, and scavenging. As you walk around the town, you can hear kids laughing. You could see um, people going into restaurants and eating, and it's a very kind of tranquil town. Now, we know there's all these horrible things happening outside the walls, but they've been able to protect the innocence of, of this town. Jackson, in many ways, represents what is at stake for our characters, uh, a life of peace and relative comfort, uh, a life where you can fall in love, a place where children can play, and it's OK. And I think you know, when we were looking at building out Jackson, it's like, okay, how many of those moments can we represent? What's awesome about the world of The Last of Us is it shows just how precious the things that we take for granted in our everyday lives, and how precious those things really are. Seattle compared to Jackson is uh, very different. It's more of a war zone, I would say. Say that again. Part of the interesting thing with Seattle or the Pacific Northwest is that there's all this rain and all this foliage and wildlife, and it's this very lush area that if someone were to settle down, it'd be a pretty good place to settle down just as far as the kind of fruit you can scavenge, the animals you can hunt. And then because it is so lush, because it is so um, teeming with resources, is why there are multiple factions trying to fight over those resources. <laughs> One faction you run into in Seattle is the Washington Liberation Front. When the outbreak happened, the military took some pretty drastic actions and quarantined parts of the country. And this was their way of protecting the population that survived this 
horrendous outbreak, and because of that, it led to rise of these resistance groups. And in the first game, we saw the fireflies, and we heard about other groups. In this game, we get to see here's another group that rose called the Washington Liberation Front that was able to defeat the army and thereby wow. take over a lot of their equipment. And there was very militaristic faction. And at the same time, you have the Seraphites, and they're a religious group that also came out of the outbreak that believed that the pandemic came because of sin. They're trying to reset the world and return it to a better place than it was. And the last of us, almost any group that has survived this long has to be dangerous. Um, if you're not dangerous, you're not going to survive. You're going to become someone's victim. And when the two factions you run into are both very dangerous, the WF has a lot of military equipment that they're able to use to defend Syria, and they have large numbers, whereas the Seraphites are very quiet and stealthy and able to use the large amount of foliage to advantage, and they fight more in kind of guerrilla warfare. How you deal with them is going to be different because they have a different language, they have a different communication style, the scars will whistle to each other with this different language. They have some of the stuff that you have. You have a bow and arrow, they can hit you with arrows and impale you, and you have to pull the arrow out. They have big sledgehammers and melee weapons. WLF, they have trained dogs that will sniff and attack you. I don't got no dogs. Can't give a brother a rock wild on that? Dogs are a new level of threat that Ellie has had to negotiate before, and hopefully they create a new complicated choice for the player. We saw in them an opportunity to, to to challenge people's perceptions of what a combat setup can be. We wanted to find really hard choices. The dogs themselves have names. They're called out by their owners. We wanted every setup to be challenging. Hmm. Huh. That's gonna be different. Damn. I don't think it would take to bring out a moose. In fact, there is still a threat in this world. We wanted, we wanted to take first our basic classes that we had in the first game and say, okay, how do we, what's different about them now? So we'll have scenarios where way more runners, like we can have hordes sometimes of runners coming after you and it might be about just escaping because the odds are just overwhelming. You know, this thing just keeps mutating. There's, there's certain evolutions of infected that you haven't seen before, certain new classes. There's shamblers, which kind of have these Exploding acid clouds. Uh, when you get near them, you're running down a hallway and you have to suddenly make a decision like, oh, do I want to take the damage and go through this cloud or find some other route or go back the way I came? And it kind of forces you to on the fly kind of make new decisions about how you're going to deal with uh, the threat behind you or potentially in front of you. So, again, it's about how do we make fighting against infected intelligence. So, when you come on space, you're listening to audio cues because different classes will make different sounds. If you just go in guns blazing and throw a caution in the wind, you could easily get overwhelmed and regret that strategy. That level of uncertainty and instability is something our characters have to carry with them every day yeah. as they go out into the world to protect the people they love most. And that threat is banging on their door every day. I really hope you make it. J-Rock says this, J-Rock cannot wait to get the people's palm on The Last of Us 2. You know, obviously the leaks have apparently turned a lot of people off to playing The Last of Us 2. And there are those like myself who don't give a damn about no damn leaks. We just want the game to do the leaks justice. Now there are some folks who are saying, the leaks are not true. Then there are some saying that some are true, some aren't true. And the story is what it's all about for the parts that are true. Um, but regardless of whether it's true or not, J-Rock will be playing this game. J-Rock will be whooping candy asses in this game. The new things you can do, dodging, couldn't do that in the first one. Uh, the type of weapons you can craft. Obviously, the engine, the game looks so good. So good. Uh, 
you're going to be riding around. There's some parts of the, the game where it's going to be too much water. Uh, you're going to have to ride around in a little motorboat. Uh, you're going to have a horse to ride around on. They had that in the last one. Um, I don't know if there's any other modes of transportation other than you. General, I don't know if there's going to be any other modes of transportation. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool, like for example, if you can get on a motorcycle. Or uh, maybe you can fix a car and drive it for a little bit. Um, I know that they said that this game is going to be a lot more open world-ish than the previous one. Uh, linear story with an open world element into it. So I think that's going to be pretty cool with the, um, the exploration. I'm an explorer. I love to explore. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons it takes me so long to finish games a lot of times because I'm constantly exploring new places. The and they're saying that, you know, there's no way you're going to be able to find everything in one playthrough. Which A-Rock says, we'll see about that. But um, two weeks from this Friday, this game is going to be released. Um, and yeah. I wonder if they're going to release any more gameplay footage prior to it. You know, like one have like one final gameplay, like another 10, 15 minute gameplay teaser. Uh, I hope they do. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Post your comments down below. Let J Rock know what's the what's the thing you're looking forward to most in playing this game. Is it the story? Is it the uh, the new gameplay mechanics? Or is it both? Let me know in the comment section down below. Go make sure you check out your boy over on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash J Rock the Great One. Alright. Did a video last night playing some Final Fantasy 7 and this Sunday night I will be back laying the Smackdown again on some Demons Candy ass in Doom Eternal 730 Eastern Standard Time so make sure you go and check that out all right you got a video you want me to check out make sure you go to the people's page um, over on Facebook J Rock the great one put your request there and if I choose your video J Rock can give you a shout out Lastly, hit that bell so that you can be notified that it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Until next time. Mamba and GG. If you smell out what J-Rock is. <laughs>